Yeah, yeah, it come off. This must be a familiar scene to many of you. A toy electric train being run round a track laid on a lounge carpet. It's fun, but uh, hardly what I would call model railways, because there's really no modelling involved. It's only running a toy train. But running on the carpet creates problems which can spoil even this simple fun. Ah, there's a piece of fluff here. That's it, that's what we're running on the carpet. <clears throat> get off, go, go on, get off. <laughs> and after the cat, here comes Mum, oh. ready to lay the table for tea. Come on, you want some tea today? She wants to lay the table, all right? Yes. That's all right. I'll kick it to do. Personally, I'm a coffee man myself. And what better use to put a coffee table to than to put a railway under it? Well, Chris Hopkins built this one. Look at it. Lovely open countryside, sheep grazing on the hill, and the road in the cutting down below serving a obviously flourishing community. They're building houses down here. It looks really quite flourishing. And if I take the coffee cup away down here, you can see the harbour. A uh, ship just coming alongside the jetty. And uh, further there is the railway station. And beyond that, the goods yard with the goods waiting to be collected. And then the signal box. And here is the level crossing barrier right down waiting for the train to come. Uh, so let's bring her up, shall we? There she is, coming along here beautifully. Coming along the straight, squealing right over the top curve, past the harbour, thundering over the lifting bridge and into the tunnel. And this time we'll take her into the station. I'll just ease her back a bit. Gently does it. There she goes. Well, if you're one of these railways in the drawing room, then if conversation ever flags, all you've got to do is simply run the train. But not all railways are quite as small as this. In fact, some of them are so large that you've got to run them right outside in the garden. The train you saw running so well on this garden railway is what we call gauge one. Now gauge one is the largest of the model railways. There she is, very large. Now someone who knows a great deal about models is Don Borum. Don, would you like to tell us about the history of the gauges and their development? In the beginning of the development there were three gauges which was one, two and three. And one gauge was not the largest but the smallest of those gauges. The poor man's? The, the poor man's railway in fact. Although it must be admitted that you need an awful lot of equipment and skill to be able to deal with gauge one. I know. Now, as gauges got smaller, the next one down was O gauge. The scale of which is 7 millimeters to the foot and the gauge is 32 millimeters. Now this is a very useful gauge because it can be run equally well in steam or electricity or indoors or outdoors. And up to about 1923 there was nothing smaller. What happens next? What happens next was that the o double O gauge was introduced this size. Hold on for a second, I'll put a matchbox in to give you a relative size. Yes, the idea. The scale of that is four millimeters to the foot and the gauge is 16.5 millimeters. It's known as double O. Now the next one below that is HO. HO is 3.5 millimeters to the foot and it's the same gauge, 16.5 millimeters, as double O and is a much more accurate scale gauge representation. Unfortunately this gauge is not used in this country but extensively in, on the continent in America. And the next one down? The next one down is known as TT and TT stands for tabletop. 
The scale is three millimeters to the foot. The gauge is 12 millimeters. Nowadays, it's more or less of obtainable in kits of parts only, so you have to make your own models. All right, let's go one down. Now, one below that is N gauge. N stands for nine, and it refers to the fact that the track gauge is nine millimeters. The scale is about two millimeters to the foot. That's the one we had on the coffee table. Yes, and it's a very nice line, as you can see. And the next one down is so small that you really need a watchmaker's eyeglass to have a look and at I it. And I have no intention whatever of touching this one. This is Z gauge, the last word, you see. The scale is about 1.5 millimeters to the foot, and the track gauge is 6.5 millimeters. And believe it or not, it's been done in steam. They'll do anything in steam. Indeed they will. Now, now, Don, what is your own personal great love? Well, my own personal preference is for narrow gauge. And here is a model of a, of a locomotive which ran on the Pentium Railway in Cornwall in the 1880s. I put it next to the O-gauge locomotive because these two are of the same scale. It's unbelievable. So it isn't, really. And a little man standing on the footplate there would be perfectly compatible with a little man standing on the footplate there because they're the same scale. But the track's very different, isn't it? The track gauge is not the same, of course, because this is a narrow gauge locomotive. The track gauge of this, 16.5 millimetres, is the same as that. And there the resemblance ends, because the sleeper spacing and sizes are compatible with these here. What else comes out of your stable, Don? Well, there's one oddity in that the Listowel and Ballybunion Railway in Ireland was a monorail, and my friends always refer to this as the no gauge. You see, it runs on one single rail, which is even narrower, of course, than Z gauge, the other two being merely for uh, purposes of stabilization. You've got to be fairly nutty to make one of those. Oh, you have, but fortunately I am, so that's all right. Now, Don, seriously, what sort of advice would you give a beginner? Well, first of all, of course, join a club, because in a club you can get all the help, assistance, advice that you need. Apart from that, I suggest that the beginners should try their hand at 4mm scale modelling double O, because completed models are available, also parts. Very easy. And what happens if he hasn't got enough space for Well, that? in that case, I suggest he tries N-gauge, because, again, completed models and also a certain amount of parts are available, and, of course, it is the scenic maker's paradise. Well, model railways don't just consist of locomotives, so let's take a look at a couple of working layouts. Let's start with one that's been run at a club meeting. This layout is approximately 20 foot long and 2 foot wide and is in double O gauge. It represents a sleepy West Country branch line and was built by members of the Twickenham Model Railway Club. The interesting thing about this layout is that it gives you the real atmosphere of a West Country branch line. Even the coal wagons have the right feel about them. And there's a nice touch with a shepherd tending his flock of sheep. And the barn with the figures and the horse help to complete the rural scene. There's even a fallen tree lying in a pond. And here comes the goods train, just about to cross the river. The loco on the passenger train is uncoupled and will eventually go to the shed for servicing. And here is a fresh loco for the return journey.
Not everyone is satisfied with only running on a club layout. Many modelers also like to have a layout in their own home. And where better to have one than in the garage? After all, isn't this what garages are for? This is an HO Continental layout built by John Christie and it includes overhead traction wires. Even the pantograph looks realistic. And you can tell it's a Continental layout from the signs on the goods train. Here are some more clues.